Hypnospace Outlaw, released March 2019, is potentially my favourite game of the year, and I'd like to talk about why. Let's start with the premise. Hypnospace Outlaw is a simulation game taking place entirely within the aforementioned hypnospace, essentially a parody of early internet. Through the use of a hilariously modest headset, it allows the user to browse a private internet whilst they sleep, allowing them to communicate with friends, update their personal page, or even conduct business. Merchantsoft, in partnership with RT Dispenser, are the creators of Hypnospace. Founded by Adrian and Dylan Merchant in 1996, they managed to create Hypnospace within just two years and became an immediate success, selling 2 million units in just six months. The game puts you into the shoes of a volunteer moderator called a HypnoS Enforcer. Enforcers are supplied with a special headset that allows them to moderate and pass judgement on users while simultaneously cutting off all forms of communication, making you a silent observer of the community. Fed with instructions on what violations of hypnospace law you are to seek out and report to the higher ups from the merchants are. There are five violations that you as an enforcer are expected to find and report. These range from copyright infringement to harassment and extra legal comments. Reporting a violation is as simple as selecting the violation and highlighting the material that you believe deserves judgment. Upon completion and review of the reported violations, you will be rewarded with Hypno Coins, a special currency that allows you to purchase anything from backgrounds to antivirus software and even virtual pets. Violations are not always out in the open and you are expected to use your detective skills to uncover violations. Hypnospace pages use a tag system, searchable terms that with skills of deduction will allow you to discover hidden pages, some of these containing harmful software or undeserved harassment. So that's the basic gist of the game, but what makes it so special? First, I want to clear up some things. The game introduces itself as a parody of early internet, and I believe this works to its favour, but there are downsides. Don't get me wrong, it's a great way to pull in players, but personally, I would say it leans a little too hard into parody in the early game. I've seen videos of people playing the game and just being enamoured with the appearance, humour and relatability of the game without looking deeper. An example I can give for this is the first case that you are assigned. You are to root out all forms of copyright infringement for the character of Gumshoe Gooper, a character from a 1962 cartoon. At this point in the game, you only have one zone available, and it's relatively straightforward to find the infringements. But the infringement is petty at best. A teacher who uses Hypnospace has shown Gumshoe Gooper to her class of first grade students. And whilst the argument could be made that the 3D representations of Gooper that are on this page look official, there are also poorly drawn pictures of Gumshoe submitted by her students that can also be reported and removed from the page. It shows the infancy and mindset of Merchantsoft and the Merchant Brothers in particular that they are willing to completely remove and ban what equates to fan art drawn by children, than to pursue the legal battle of fair use, and to argue that a user is not profiting by showing children's drawings. The writing is one of the strongest aspects of this game, which is to be expected for a simulation of this design, but it goes above and beyond your expectations, and is hard to describe why it's so good without venturing into spoiled territory. But what I can say is that as it takes place over several days, you can feel that the characters are interacting through their own means, either through HypnoChat, or maybe even in person or through the regular internet. As time passes, you can watch friendships end and begin, a community unite for a cause, and even witness tragedy and the resulting fallout and lack of empathy that follows. 
just what you would expect from the edgy proto-internet. The music on the other hand I can talk about without fear of spoilers, and it is a fantastic soundtrack. The game is expansive, each community has its own appropriate theme, every user's page has its own track. You can find pop music, commercial jingles, as well as indie, underground, and personal projects too. Most with its own download link so that you can play it through the HypnoS music player. But whilst these are just signs of a good game, why did it resonate with me so well? And how do I explain it with a minimum of spoilers? Well, I have a simple question. Did you ever lurk? I did and still do. Actively following but not being a vocal part of an online community is a habit I just have not been able to break, regardless of how I feel when those communities shut down. It felt just like that in Hypnospace, regardless of my actions, as they would have been performed by any other enforcer. When I first played through Hypnospace, I was going through a depressive episode, but getting to know the users and the feelings of discovery as I solved case after case gave me that same personal feeling of discovering a community, and with no way in which to communicate with others, it felt just like so many of my previous experiences, and whilst I would never say that a video game could cure depression, different feelings surpassed my depressive state and took my focus, a strange combination of nostalgia, ennui and melancholy. Real life seemed pale in comparison to what I had observed, through what was potentially the most melancholic ending to a game I've experienced. Hypnospace affected me for weeks. I wanted to help the people that I had gotten to know. I had seen them grow and been a witness to their lives and creativity. My head was swimming with small fantasies of how characters could have acted differently. Say, if only this character had taken more responsibility, or if this character had been accepted by who he perceived as his peers. And I think that's one of the best compliments that you can give a simulation game. It makes you feel that it was real. But that's the power of hindsight, and I should be satisfied with melancholic but morally good ending. And especially when I replayed it and discovered that I could make decisions that would affect the ending. Hypnospace Outlaw currently sits on the Steam Store with an overwhelmingly positive review average, but I still feel that it has been criminally overlooked. It's an enjoyable simulation game with great writing, believable characters, and fantastic music. So I just want to say thank you for watching this far. Um, if you got any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I know audio quality probably a big issue, <clears throat> but uh, I'm trying to work on that. Um, I didn't want to touch too much on the game's content for this video because I didn't want to do a review or a critique. Uh, I just wanted to do an appreciation video. Um, I might do a few other things. Um, like appreciation styles, uh, I, so many people do reviews and critiques, uh, hard to stand out. Um, I've got a few videos uh, that I'm working on at the moment, uh, probably a bit more in depth than this one. Um, sorry if I'm squinting a bit, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, I'll try and figure out microphone quality and stuff. It's, it's it's awkward. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching.